Number 21 on the list is the Rio Cup final in 2009 in the Maracana in Rio de Janeiro. Um, absolutely incredible atmosphere, 80,000 people, never seen anything like it. Um, the game itself wasn't particularly memorable. Um, it was won by Botafogo who beat uh, Flamingo by one goal to nil, it was an own goal in the second half. Uh, Cleberson, uh, the former Man United player, played for Flamingo. But the atmosphere was just amazing. It was just pure Brazilian, absolute, you know, love of, of, of soccer. It was, it, was, uh, it was a great experience to be at. Number 20 on the list is the 2022 J.P. McManus Adair Manor Pro-Am. Uh, what an incredible opportunity it was to see so many top golfers playing in Ireland. Um, there were nine either current or previous world number ones, uh, including uh, Scotty Scheffler, who was the current number one at the time, Rory McIlroy, who has since become world number one, uh, Tiger Woods, um, also there was Ian Woosnam, Luke Donald, Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kopke. So amazing to see nine world number ones uh, you know, playing in, in, in one tournament in Ireland, uh, especially considering it was, you know, it wasn't a, um, you know, a tour competition. It's incredible that so many, um, you know, great players came to play. Um, also there, Shane Lowry, um, Bryson DeChambeau, Conor Marikawa, all major winners in their own right. So it was an uh, amazing experience, it really, really was. Number 19 brings us back to 2009. Uh, this time at the City West in Dublin for the World Darts Grand Prix uh, where uh, Phil Taylor, uh, the legendary darts player, beat uh, another legend in his own right, Raymond Van Barneveld, by, uh, by six sets to three. Um, really, good, really good game, great performance by Phil Taylor, who averaged over 97. Um, great atmosphere there, as, as you can imagine. Um, you know, seeing, seeing two darts legends in action, but uh, yeah, that was very enjoyable and great to great to see a legend such as Phil Taylor playing live. Number 18 brings us back to 2005 to the All-Ireland football final between Tyrone and Kerry. Um, Tyrone winning that one by a margin of three points, 116 to 210. Uh, great game of football, really exciting. Uh, some amazing players on, on show. Brian Dewar was the captain of Tyrone. Of Tyrone. Um, Peter Canavan got a goal and a point. Uh, Owen Mulligan got five points. You know, some absolutely brilliant players on display and also on the Kerry side, um, Darrow Canada, Colin Cooper, um, you know, outstanding uh, for Kerry. Uh, it was a great season for Tyrone. Um, they played 10 matches in total, including three games that ended in a draw, two matches in, in, in Ulster and then the, the quarter final against Dublin also. Um, so they had to go the hard way. Um, you know, they did to play Armagh um, in the semi-final where they won by a point. And then it went on to, to, to win the, the final then, of course, against Kerry. Uh, very entertaining. Great to, great to see uh, so many great players on display. Um, so, yeah, it's a real, real, real good memory for me. Number 17 was um, almost a magnificent victory for the Irish football team against Italy. Um, it was in 2009, um, qualifiers for the 2010 World Cup. Uh, we ended up drawing two all in the end. Uh, it's a game we, we, we almost and probably should have won. And the first half, Glenn Whelan uh, put us ahead before Cameron Aze equalised. So we didn't all at half time. Three minutes to go, Sean St. Ledger um, got a, put us ahead uh, with, a, with a header. Three minutes to go, 2 1 up. The, the atmosphere was just incredible. Probably one of the best I've ever seen in Lansdowne Road. Um, you know, we were all set for the victory uh, for Jill Ardino um, equalised uh, to make it 2 all and broke our hearts. Um, made some incredible players playing for Italy that day, um, apart from the aforementioned who got the goals. Uh, Pirlo was playing, Chiellini, um, you know, and Buffon in goal as well. So, uh, you know, it really showed the, the, almost the, the, the magnitude of what we almost achieved. Um, that, that, uh, that draw sent us into a playoff uh, where we famously lost to, to France um, and, and failed to make the World Cup. Um, but yeah, very close to being... Uh, been a famous victory and I think it would have been higher up this list uh, had uh, that equaliser not gone in at the last minute. Number 16 takes me way back to 1986 for the Munster Hurling final between Clare and Cork. Uh, this is a game where Clare played great for large parts uh, but in keeping with, with their record in, 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 in that period they, they fell just short and, and Cork managed to get the win. 
Um, so the scoreline at the end was um, 312 to 218 to Cork. So Cork pulled away a little bit at the end. Um, but I suppose what struck me, you know, leaving the ground that day in Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney was that, you know, the Clare supporters went away feeling very happy with themselves. They'd have played so well. And Cork supporters were, were very disappointed with their performance. And it just, I suppose, it, 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 it spoke volumes really about the, the expectation uh, in both counties. Um, you know, and obviously Cork were used to winning and uh, they always managed to do enough to get the job done. Uh, among the scorers for Cork that day, some absolute legends, uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy, John Fenton, Kevin Hennessy, Jim Cashman, Tony O'Sullivan, you know, absolute uh, heroes of, of the game. Uh, from, from the Clare side, Tommy Guilfoyle got two goals, um, also part of that team um, and were on the score sheet that way. They were, were Cyril Lyons and Jerry McInerney, who nine years later um, were involved in, in, the, in the group of players that won the Munster and All-Ireland Hurling uh, title in 2005, or 95, I should say. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it really stands out uh, very clear in my head. Uh, despite all these years, um, you know, it was what might have been for Clare, but, um, you know, that core team were absolutely immense and, uh, you know, they fully deserved it. Number 15 is the World Golf Championship um, Cadillac uh, World Match Play from 2015 in Harding Park in San Francisco. Uh, Rory McIlroy uh, won that won that event, um, and he beat Gary Woodland in the final. So it was great to great to see Rory uh, winning that event while we were there. Uh, he won all seven of his matches. Played really really good golf. Um, as I say, he beat Gary Woodland in the final. Jim Furyk uh, in the semi final. Paul Casey in the um, quarter final. The last sixteen he beat um, uh, Matsuyama. And then the group stage he won all of his matches as well beating um, Horschel and Duffner. Um, so it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a great, great, uh, great event. Um, and uh, yeah, really good to, to go to something like that and see, and see somebody like Rory come out on top. Number 14 is from March 2002. Um, Liverpool played Chelsea at Anfield. Uh, last minute winner by Vladimir Smitser gave Liverpool the win that sent them top of the table. Uh, they would go on to, to come second uh, behind Arsenal that year. Um, but some great players on display that day as well. Um, from the Chelsea side, there was you know Manuel Petit, Frank Lampard, Gianfranco Zola, um, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank. Um, from Liverpool's perspective, um, there was Michael Owen, Yari Littman, and Nicholas and Elka, Stephen Gerrard, uh, Jamie Carragher. So, yeah, some some good players on display. Um, yeah, very exciting to see a, a last minute winner. Number 13 is from 2004 and today Ireland beat Scotland um, to win the Triple Crown for the first time in 19 years. That was a great occasion to be at. Um, we won the game by 36 points to 19. Um, Gordon Darcy scored two tries that day. Uh, Brian O'Driscoll uh, was the man of the match, he was immense, played extremely well. Um, some great players, um, some, some real you know, all-time legends uh, from Ireland were playing that day. You know, apart from O'Driscoll, you know, Connell O'Gara, um, the late Anthony Foley was there. Um, you know, there was some some real, real, real superstars there, and uh, it was yeah great to be there. First time in 19 years we won the triple crown, and obviously we went on to 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 win a good few more in the in in the following years. Number 12 is from 2019. I was in the the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to see Bayern Munich beat Spurs by seven goals to two uh, in the Champions League group stage. Uh, the first time I've ever seen um, a player in a, in, a, in a game of that significant scoring four goals where Serge Gnabry got, got four goals. Uh, Lewandowski um, got two goals as well that day. It was the ninth consecutive game that he'd scored in, um, in which he'd scored f 14 goals uh, in, the previous, in the previous games. So, um, yeah, some, some great players um, on the Bayern side that day. Um, you know, Neuer was there. Um, this was two former, or one former, one future Liverpool player, um, Coutinho and um, Thiago, were playing for Bayern. Um, obviously, as, as I mentioned, um, you know Lewandowski, Gnabry, also there was uh, Kingsley Coman and Alaba as well. So some some real, real great players. Uh, so it was definitely worth the trip. It's great to see nine goals. 
Number 11 is the All-Ireland Hurling semi-final from 2018 between Galway and Clare, the, the drawn game. The match ended uh, 1.30 apiece. Uh, it was the first time that two teams in, in the championship both scored 30 points. It was absolutely amazing hurling um, from both teams and I think it was fitting that it ended in a draw. Uh, Johnny Cohen got a point for Galway um, at, the, at the very end, um, you know, just, just at the end of the game that looked like it won it for Galway by a point. But deep into injury time, uh, Jason McCarthy, uh, the substitute for Clare, got a, an equaliser to, to bring it to a replay. Galway would go on to win the, the replay and would go on then to lose to Limerick uh, in the All-Ireland final. Um, but a great game. I think it was probably the best game of hurling I've ever seen um, in terms of the quality um, and, and some of the scores that were on display. Um, Joe Canning was the, the hero, I suppose, for, for Galway, the real leader in that team and uh, Tony Kelly for Clare. Uh, Peter Duggan scored um, 14 points that day, uh, I think 11 of which were from freeze. Um, but yeah, he played really well. Um, but yeah, amazing game of hurling, 1.30 each.